Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you um, a bunch of things about visualizing a bipartite network in Gephi 0.9.2. Uh, it's a network of Wikipedia articles connected to Wikipedia editors and it's uh, available in the description down below. It's a fairly big network with 41,000 nodes and 55,000 edges. I say that because you may want to filter it right away if your computer is uh, a little bit slow. But I'm going to show how to do that and so that you understand why we filter the way we filter, I'm going to put a layout first. So let's visualize the network a little bit. And let's put some color to the nodes because there is a node attribute named type that tells us whether a node is an editor or an article. So the articles are in green and the editors are in pink. Okay. So, what makes it a bipartite network is first that we have two types of nodes. It's also called a two-mode network for that reason sometimes. But also that uh, there are only edges between nodes of two different types. So there are no article-to-article -article edges and there are no editor-to-editor -editor edges either. What can we do to filter the network because it's too big? We can get rid of the nodes that are poorly connected. And the rationale goes as follows. If we want to uh, analyze that data as a network, and that's not the only solution, for many reasons, we may want to do something else, like go in Tableau or whatever. But if we go to the network route, that's because we are interested in the links. Um, but then the nodes that have almost no links, so either zero link, is, there are none in this network, but there might be, or nodes that have only one link, those are not really interesting to us in that setting, so we can get rid of those. But I want to show you where they are in this network, because it actually shows something interesting about the, the profiling of the data. As you can see here, we have a, a little mushroomy or flower thing, or cauliflower, um, where it's actually made of one central node, here an article, connected to many editors. And this is just coming from the fact that, um, of course, not only we have much uh, more editors than articles, because each article was written by many contributors, but also many of those contributors only contributed to that article very specifically, which may be a little bit surprising, but it's not surprising if you've seen many networks because um, empirical networks tend to have a power law distribution of the degree in other terms. If you look at the number of neighbors of the nodes, you will observe that very often um, most of the nodes don't have many neighbors, and a few of the nodes have many, many, many neighbors. So it's, the distribution is extremely skewed in that sense. And actually, if we just take a look at the network visually, you will see that these cauliflowers are everywhere. So those, this is the sign that there are many articles that have single article editors. So to get rid of those, there is a little trick. That's why I, I show it in this video. Uh, first of all, the filter is in topology, and you have to drag degree range right here. And then we can click on filter and filter the network by not showing the most connected, or on the contrary, not showing the less connected. But the thing is, the degree goes so high that to capture the nodes that are connected more than uh, two or three, is, it's, really, it's really difficult to reach. So the trick is you can actually click on this number here and give a number of your choice. Then you must hit enter. That's the trick, else it's not taken into account. And then you can filter exactly the way you want. So what the way I want here is to just show the nodes that have at least two neighbors. And that's what I get. Actually, I think that other numbers like three would also be kind of valid. Maybe I'm going to go for three. Let's do that. Okay, so now the, the nodes, some of the nodes are hidden. You can see that I kept only 5% of my data. So 
it means that 95% of the nodes are connected uh, once or twice. If actually I use two here, I would see that 90% of the nodes are connected once because then only 10% remain. So that's, that's how skewed it is. And of course, when I do that, the, the cauliflower has disappeared. Um, now I can give a different uh, layout and this layout is much more satisfying in some ways, even though, as we can see, there are actually no clusters. And the cauliflowers that we just eliminated we are not really clusters because in these packets uh, the nodes were not connected together. The only thing they had in common is being connected to the same article. Now, the nodes that ha I have just hidden are actually still there, right? I just, I just made them invisible. They are still kind of taking space in my computer and so on. So I want to actually definitely get rid of them and also save my file because at this stage I'm pretty satisfied. So that's what I am going to do, and I suggest you do the same. In menu filter export graph file, you can actually save your file as a GEXF. I'm going to call that uh, my filtered network, because now that's the filtered version. And pay attention here, you can, let me show you that better, you can check full or visible only. And this is what decides what you do with the hidden nodes. With full, you are going to save everything, and if you check visible only, you only save the nodes that are currently visible. So this is gonna um, actually definitely get rid of the hidden nodes. I'm just going to save that, and now if I open this file again, my filter network, then here it is, I just have 2,000 nodes. So that's the network I want to to work with from now on. Um, I'm just going to show one last thing to do with that network because the visualization is not super useful at this stage, but we can do some statistics and then we can maybe go back to other tools like Tableau or something. Um, so let's talk centrality metrics. There is always a centrality metric you can use, it's the degree. That's the number of neighbors of the nodes. You could, you could understand that as a centrality metrics. And if I just, uh, put the size to the nodes as a function of the degree, well, I can uh, basically see that certain nodes are more important than others. And here, of course, I see these articles. The articles have much more neighbors than editors. So that's pretty uh, normal. Also, I want to mention here that everything I'm computing now is on the filtered network. Of course, I have eliminated some of the nodes, so this is really important to mention in terms of method. Let's see other central centrality metrics. The one I'm going to use are kind of hidden in the statistics panel behind network diameter. So when you compute network diameter for computation regions, um, it also computes other centralities like between a centrality and closeness centrality. Those are the ones I'm interested in. So let's just compute that. Uh, ah, done. Great. You can close the report. So let's just show them and I'm going to uh, comment on that now. So in the appearance parallel, I can now use them as a way to, to uh, give a size to the node. Let me first use the between S centrality. And it's a little bit different from the degree, but not that much. The between S centrality is high for the nodes that are on many shortest paths between the other nodes. Intuitively, uh, it finds the bridges. But in this case, we don't have really clusters, so bridges doesn't make really any sense. And basically, it gives you almost the same thing as the degree. Let's look at the closeness centrality. Oh, and then it's pretty different. Um, it just turns out that the closeness centrality, when, even when it's slow, it's not that slow. So to kind of change the profile so that we see more differences between the nodes, I'm just going to use a spline. Okay, yeah, a little bit better. At least we see, first of all, that it's very different from degree and between nest centrality, but also it finds certain nodes as more uh, central in that sense, the nodes here, and this time the nodes that have a higher closed nest centrality are editors, which is interesting. So closed nest centrality is high when you are close in terms of number of uh, jumps 
uh, in the shortest path when you are close on average to the other nodes in the network. So unsurprisingly, the nodes on the side have a low closeness centrality and the nodes in the middle have a high closeness centrality, but you can still see that the area where the nodes have the higher closeness centrality is not exactly the middle, but this part right here. Okay, maybe we could tell a few things about the visualization. I'm not going to go that road. I just want to say that probably the most productive to do, uh, thing to do from there is to actually go into the data laboratory and then sort the nodes according to this centrality matrix. You can see, for instance, which, has, which are the nodes that are the most central for betweenness centrality. Those are, oops, let me go to the top of the list. Those nodes. And the nodes that are the most central for closeness centrality are those nodes. And as you can see, those are editors, while for betweenness centrality, the the top nodes are articles. So this ranking may be useful to you to uh, focus on certain articles or certain editors in various ways, as long as you can justify why you picked those, and this comes from the centrality matrix. That's the reason to go into network analysis. That's it.